This teaching is presented by the Reconciliation Ambassadors Believers Assembly and focuses on the topic of fear, causes, implications, and the way out. It places a particular emphasis on the fear of the Lord as a positive form of fear. The teaching underscores that fearing God entails a reverent obedience to His commandments, which is a fundamental duty for all of humanity. Additionally, it highlights the significance of avoiding evil and emphasizes that when God is with us, there is no need to fear. The teaching draws upon key scriptures to support these points and assures believers that the Lord grants them the spirit of power and a sound mind. In Jesus' mighty name, I eternal of ages, the hours have come again to learn at your feet. Father, I set a praise in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for the abundance of your word to be released unto these your people in Jesus' mighty name. Our God and our Father, let your word have a free course and be glorified in the life of your people today in the battle of Jesus. Father, we bless your name, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Well, welcome to another series of the world from uh, Reconciliation Ambassadors Believers Assembly. And uh, the Lord will continue to answer us, even speedily, in Jesus' mighty name. The episode that we want to go to from this week may take us to about two or three parts again. May take us to about two or three parts again. And the title of that discussion is Fear, that is the causes, implication, and the way out, part one. Fear. The causes, implication, and uh, and uh, the way out, the part one. Well, the Bible scripture that we are using for this one is a Proverbs, and it's a proverb chapter. Uh, now it's a popular scripture. Proverbs chapter nine and verse uh, ten. Proverbs chapter nine and verse ten. It says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Is the loaded word. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. At another time, we may pick that scripture and analyze the whole concept of that scripture. For but today, we don't pick it as a reference uh, point. That is, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that is to tell us that uh, uh, it is not all fears that are evil. It is not all fears that are evil. There is what I termed holy fear. And I call it positive fear, as well as the evil, evil fear. And I call that one as a negative, negative uh, fear. That is, uh, we have... Uh, Holy fear, that is positive fear, and evil fear, that is a negative uh, fear. When the area of positive fear, which will be the focus of our part one of this discussion, under the fear causes implication and we have, we want to look at the positive fear, that is, which is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is a positive uh, fear. We have seen what Proverbs chapter 9 as I said, I said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. When you fear God, every other thing will fall in place. Every, every, all, even all the scriptures that have been cited from our past uh, messages, they still fall in place under the fear of, of, of the Lord. Is it Matthew 6 3? Is it all this Hebrew, uh, Hebrew chapter 6? What to see that we read even the last. Uh, Last uh, last week uh, episode, everything everything fall in line with uh, the fear of uh, God. That God said that uh, if you must be my uh, my servant, take your cross and follow me. If I say, oh, that cross is too heavy, I cannot bear uh, That person is not ready uh, to carry out the, the the will of God, and the fear of the Lord is not in that uh, person. The proverb. Chapter 10, 
If you look at Proverbs chapter 10 again, let's see what that word is talking about too. Proverbs chapter 10, and let us look at verse 27. 27, the fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. May we not be wicked to attract shortened age in Jesus' mighty name. The fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. May our life not be cut short in Jesus' mighty name. So what we are saying is that uh, there is only fear. There is positive uh, fear. Fairy God starts by having only reference to God. Only reference. Not just a reference as if uh, you, are just, uh, you, are just, you are just teasing somebody. That is fairy God starts by having only reference for God. Recognizing him as the supreme being. And without doubting it in your heart. That's where we have what we call uh, holy, holy fear. And it, follow his commandment as a matter of obligation is a way of exercising holy fear unto God. That is, uh, you want to follow God, you want to follow the commandment of, of, of God all the time. Then we are we, we fear him. Not that we are, we are just afraid. So we fear him because he is the he is the owner of the universe, he is the one that can do. And the one that can that can undo. The Lord will give us the grace even to surrender ourselves to the fear of the Lord. So that the wisdom that is attendant unto him will come unto us in Jesus' mighty name. I say again, fearing God start by having only reference to God, recognizing him as the, as the supreme being. Then following his commandment as a matter of obligation. Let's see what a psalm. The book of Psalm 100 is talking about there. Psalm 100, let's see what a uh, verses uh, 3 and uh, 4 they are talking about there. Verse 3, know ye that the Lord is, he, he is God. It is he that has made all, and not we ourselves. And, and we are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving, and into his court we pray. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. It's only the fear of God that can make us to do that one. The Lord will give us the grace to willingly obey God at all times in Jesus' mighty name. Fearing and following God is the whole duty of man. Fearing and following God is the whole duty of man. That is, the, the Bible has told us that, uh, that when we go to the book of Ecclesiastes, let's see what uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 has to tell us there. Chapter, uh, verse 3, um, chapter 3, verse 14. Let's see what uh, uh, verse 14 of that chapter 3 will tell us. I know that whatever God does, he shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it. Nor anything taken from it, and God doeth it that man should fear before him. It is only to God that we will exercise our fear unto, not unto, not unto our problems. At the next episode, we see the negative fear. But this, this, this episode, we are considering only the positive fear. It is only God, it is only God that we hold our fear, and the Lord will give us the grace. To reference him accordingly in Jesus' mighty name. Let's look at even that same Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let's look at chapter uh, verses 13 and uh, 14 there. Look at the blue, the two chapter, the two verses in that uh, book. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God uh, and keep his commandment, for this is the old duty of man. And verse 14 says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Our work shall not be evil in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, this means that uh, we are made to follow God as a matter of duty. It's not, a, it's not whether, I, if I want to follow him, I will follow him. If I don't want to follow him, I can do, go my way. Right? We can choose not to follow him. 
But the, the aftermath of not following God is always catastrophic. May we not have a catastrophic end in Jesus' mighty name. So the, it is advisable we follow him. He's the one that creates us. That's what we read in the book of uh, Psalm 100, uh, verses uh, 3 and 4. He's the one that made us. And somebody that made something can do whatever, whatever he likes with what he has done. Just like we are the clay. He's the potter. He can make, he can make our, our clay of any substance that you want to want to aware. Then why are you now running away? Or why why would you now be hiding from that person that can make, that can do and not do with, with, uh, with our life? The Lord will give us the grace to be submissive unto God. I thought that in Jesus' mighty name. So we must follow God as a matter of a duty. We must follow him. Then, then the sin rebuke uh, before all that others may fear. That is an uh, account of First Timothy. That's account of First uh, Timothy. There, he said, then that a uh, sin rebuke before all that others may fear. What we are saying, some people hate any any aspect of correction. The 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 smallest thing you can do to annoy some people is to tell them that you are wrong in that in that in that area. If actually they are wrong, they don't want to admit for any reason that they are wrong. <laughs> I hope they are not preparing themselves for a doom day in Jesus' mighty name. So that's it. Then, then that sin. Anyone that that sin, then you must we must rebuke before all. Although when we are doing that one, we must put some uh, wisdom into it. But put some wisdom into it to rebuke uh, them. Because if you if you if you just say uh, why did you go and commit adultery yesterday, even if even he was prepared to repent before, the approach the approach may not be that right before him. So we have to approach that thing with the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God will teach us how to approach that, that uh, sinner to the extent that he will be on his on his feet. So First Timothy chapter five verse twenty says that then that uh, that sin that is rebuke. Before all, that others may fear that uh, there is a judgment of God. Oh, no, that, uh, the Bible does not say we should judge them. But at, at the time, other people see that uh, somebody is being confronted in the open. Then the fear of not being confronted in the open by their own evil are too. We be on them and they run away from evil. That's again what we mean by the fear of the Lord is the beginning of uh, freedom. Uh, as we go into this uh, world of fear, fear of, of the Lord, I said there are positive fears and uh, there are negative uh, fears. Part of the positive, positive fears is what we are, we are talking about uh, today. We are having the issue of a positive fear today. And the, the part two of this uh, uh, discussion will be on the negative uh, fear. That the negative fear. Let's look at Revelation, uh, Psalms chapter 1, 1 and 12, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 1, 1, 2, verse 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. Number two, his sin shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house. And the righteousness endure forever. You see, when we when we decided not to fear God, we are only shortchanging ourselves. We can see the embodiment of blessings that are loaded in this scripture. That is Psalm 112, verses 1 to 3. Just, just blessing, just for just for fearing God. Oh, I I mean only reference, not just fear. That is just like the the fear of uh, the Adam and Eve. Uh, I have your first, uh, and I'm afraid, and I'm hiding myself. That's not the type of fear I'm talking about. Genuine, genuine fear uh, to, to the law. That's what we are, turning, we are talking about. Fear of the law is to shun evil dreams. That is to pave the way for God's blessing. For us to have God's blessing, where we must fear, must fear after his uh, uh, precept. And the Lord will give us the grace, even to surrender our all unto the dictates of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Fear the Lord. Shun evil deed. Then all the benefits will not happen. When we go through it again, 
Psalm 112, verses 1 to, to 3. You see, is a bundle of blessing that we accompany our, our fear of, uh, uh, of God. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. Let's look at uh, a few verses there. After Isaiah chapter 41, we can look at uh, maybe a few 41 verse. Uh, let's start from 8. Let's start from 8. From 8 there. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. As we said in the other episode that uh, Abraham uh, was a friend of God. So that's the confirmation here that Abraham, my friend. And verse uh, 9 says, Thou whom I have taken from the end of the head, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast uh, thee away. Then verse, verse 10 now crowns what we want to uh, bring out there. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will oppose thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You can see all the blessings again. You can see the blessing again. So once uh, once we don't we don't uh, uh, become afraid, you know, except uh, except for the fear of God, surrendering so one's life to God, fear must not have its place in the life of a believer. And that Lord will give us understanding, even to understand that one. In Jesus' mighty name. Said, do not fear, for I am with you. Also, Matthew, tell us something great there. Matthew, let's look at uh, what Matthew chapter 14 talks about. Matthew 14, I will uh, look at uh, 22. What is it? Let's see as many chapters, we, as many verses we can uh, take there. And straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to, to get into a ship and to go before him on to the other side while he sent the multitude away. Verse 23. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening uh, was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the, of the sea, tossed with waves. With wave. For the winds was contrary. Number 25. And in the, uh, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them walking on the, walking on the sea. That was uh, 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a, it is a spirit. And they cried out uh, for fear. That's not the, the type of positive fear we are talking about. And verse uh, 27. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them, Say, Be ye of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter <laughs> answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind uh, boisterous, he was afraid. Can you see? The, the confidence that he had in Jesus was punctured by fear. The confidence that, that he had in Jesus was punctured that he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried, Savior, Lord, save me. That is one of, I don't know, from that episode we see the evil effect of, uh, the evil effect of, uh, 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 the, the, the fear, the negative side of fear, the, 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 the negative fear. Now we look at them from that episode. You can see what happened. He had the confidence before his time, but the confidence was was punctured. Just like uh, he has forgotten that uh, he is going to, he, he was going to to cry. When when he now realized that he was walking on the water, uh, the spirit of of, of man, you know, just minister to him that you it out. It is on water. That you are working on. By the time now realize that uh, he's actually working on water, then he has the, the, the fear 
has come in. The confidence is cast away. Then fear came in. And when fear came in, then he began to sing. Thank God that uh, he cried before it was too late. <laughs> Thank God he cried before it was too late. Master, will you be looking at me like this? I said, that's okay, okay, okay. And, and come up. So you can see, you can see uh, the negative effect of, uh, of uh, fear there. But by, by next episode, we look at it. We look at it in there. That is, the, the causes of the negative fear, even the implication of the negative fear, and the way forward for us to uh, get rid of a, a negative fear. But what we are saying, and we are summary, is that uh, our confidence, our confidence must be in God. We must not exercise any fear. It is the fear that will make us to doubt. When we refer to uh, our father of uh, faith again, that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And as I just said, that he was doing all those one because he knew that what God has promised, he will, he will do. But if somebody that was after 100 years, thank God that that the, the time that Abraham operated, we, 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 the people on our on this planet at now, we are not, we are not uh, the type of people that were there. They will have frustrated God in a number of ways. When it was okay, go and count the number of sins. Go and count the number of sins. The next thing is that uh, go and do this. Uh, the, the stars I counted yesterday. What did he bring for me? The son that I can't hear yesterday, God bring for me. After 100 years, I've not given back to a child. And you said I will be the father of many nations. That is what the nature of the people now address will be saying. Thank God that it's not this generation that that thing happened, that the word of God is established. So the aftermath of fear is always catastrophic, as we had it in the life of uh, uh, Peter. Although the presence of Jesus averted that catastrophe. But what we are saying is that uh, once we, we have confidence with God, we must not doubt in our mind. By the time we say we have confidence in God, then we, we, must, not allow, we must not allow any doubt again. By the time we allow doubt, then we have punctured, we have punctured the whole of our faith. We have punctured the whole of our faith. That now we give all the grace, even not to puncture our own faith by ourselves in Jesus' mighty name. When we look at uh, the book of uh, Hebrews said, said, Now faith is the substance of things all for the evidence of things not seen. For one to be able to hold a tight unto that, there mustn't be any atom of faith, I mean, any, any atom of fear in the mind of that person. That is, he must dogmatically, I want to use that word, he must dogmatically follow Christ. Whether whether it is convenient or it is not convenient, whether if the Israelites were considering the Red Sea, I think all of them would have died at, uh, at uh, Egypt. When they got to that place, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, they left uh, Egypt. And uh, God knew what he wanted to do. I believe that uh, there could have been other ways that Israelites would have been taken through, that God would have taken uh, the Israelites to, not right from the way of the Red Sea. But because God knew what he wanted to do, and the Bible said that, and the Lord had in the heart of Pharaoh so that he can draw him. So that if God has led the Israelites through other paths that is not through the way of the of the resident, it means uh, what? it is possible that Pharaoh will have uh, will, uh, will have died, but not but not through uh, this, not not through drowning. So God knew that uh, He wanted to complete His work of drowning him. That was okay. My people go through this uh, way of the of the sea. And God that knew the hand from the beginning. By the time they are approaching the the, the rest, it thank God it's not our time again. We will have been hearing so many nasty nasty words. Most will have been hearing so many nasty nasty words. But thank God for the grace. That was put upon the life of, uh, of Moses and even the Israelites that time. They press up. They press up. God gave instruction and the instruction will follow and uh, the sea parted away. Then the Israelites passed through the dry sea. 
Oh, the Egyptian zoo. Yeah, we are coming. Yes, we are going there. We are going there. God that knew what he wanted to do. After the his own children, after his own children are passed, even the 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 rest say, then he now commanded the sea to close against the enemies of the uh, people. The Lord will give us the grace. The, the spirit for us, even the grace for us, the grace for us to be able to exercise confidence, not to avoid. If, if, if Moses and the people were exercising fear that time, I, think, I believe that uh, the Egyptians would have come and captured them live and direct them. But because of the fact that they were not afraid, they were listening to the word of God and they were carrying out the instruction of God, then the victory was delivered unto them, and so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord will give up the spirit, the spirit, the, the spiritual power, even and the power for us to be able to listen to his word, the power to be able to fear after his word, the power to be able to do that which he has commanded, so that everything that he has promised uh, shall be held shall be given unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless your name. Our God and our Father, we lift your name on high. Because you have spoken yourself out again. Because you are the word yourself. You have spoken yourself. And the people have understood you. Be that glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, blessed Father, for in Jesus' name we are praying. But I bet you somebody wants to make it right with God. You have heard the word. It's only the children of God that can have a, a, a spirit that just like that of lion that, that, will, that will not be afraid. Somebody that is after the world will be afraid. Even at, even at uh, rats, just uh, chasing themselves in the house, they will, they will be afraid. But for us to be able to be as confident as a lion, not to exercise any fear and whatever thing, but the only fear that we have to exercise is the fear of the Lord. It is only the children of God that can be entitled to that one. Want to make it right with God today? Place your right hand on your chest and say after me, Father, I come to you today. I want to make it right with you today. I realize myself as a sinner. And I decided within me that I want to forsake of all my sin. Help me, O oh Lord, to be able to forsake this sin. And make me your true child in Jesus' my name. Father, we bless your name, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. As I always say, do not make yourself to be a prisoner of your past. Once you have genuinely com com confessed your sins unto God, He has uh, answered you. He has accepted you to the family of God. Don't start with thinking that, oh, has He forgiven me? Has He forgiven Once you don't cause any other thing for yourself, He has forgiven you. And everything that you now is now you are now a, a, a new creature, and the grace for you to sustain that newness of heart that now will release unto you in Jesus' my name. Father, we bless you once again. On the next time that we are made, we say, Bless your people mightily, and let them come with their testimony in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Amen.